Okay guys, I'm going to do my best to share with you what I have learned in creating JST connectors. Uh, wires, I should say. So this is a JST connector, the inside. Now it's probably very hard to see and my camera is probably not staying in focus for you. Actually, let me hold it over the green. There we go. Okay, so what we have here is the piece I am holding on to is just waste which keeps all the connectors on a strip, which I'm assuming is meant for a machine, but we're not machines, we're humans, so we will cut that scrap off later. Uh, the first tangs or crimp pieces are to wrap to grab the insulation of the wire. The middle smaller one is to grab the actual bare strip piece of the wire. And then this end boxy looking thing is actually the female pin receptacle. So you have to be very careful when putting this in the crimp tool to make sure this is always outside of your crimp tool because you do not want to crimp this end piece here. And you can see there's a tiny, tiny tab sticking up right there. That coincides with the little slot in the plastic piece of the connector to keep this pin in the connector. Okay, so that all being said, try and focus here, guys. I am going to insert this into my crimper so that the crimper is just to the edge of that female connector. Now, I think I got duped on this crimp tool. You guys let me know if you know. This appears to be for DuPont connectors, to what I see, from the dimensions and from the shape of the dies. But it was sold to me with a kit with both DuPont connectors and JST connectors. But again, I think I got duped. And this is not really made for JST connectors, but I'm managing, sorry about that, I'm managing to make it work anyhow. Um, focus is really difficult, guys. I am sorry about that. So again, my job here is to get this into the crimping tool so that the two tangs that are going to grab the wire are in there and the female receptacle is not. So this may not look so good on camera, so give me a second here, please. I'm going to insert it into the die and then just align it so that's just outside. And then what you do is you ratchet this. Not sure if you heard that, so that it holds the connector in place all on its own. Okay, then on the other side, that's where we're gonna insert the wire. So if we grab our wire, what did I do with my wire? Here it is. <laughs> you first wanna absolutely make sure there's no frayed ends on your stripped piece okay and then you have to insert this into that little hole and after you do a few of these you'll get the feel for it because you probably can't see this and yeah, it's not gonna focus for us but what I do is I look right there into the connector and you can, should be able to see the tip of the wire, if not the insulation. If you see insulation, you pushed in too far, so back it out. And if you see wire, you're in just a little too far, so back it out just a little bit. So I'm going to back mine out until I don't see any more wire and then finish the crimp. The crimp. Pop that connector out of there and then we can inspect it. And hopefully you can see that. The insulation is grabbed by the first tangs, and then the middle ones grab the stripped wire. And again, I did not damage that end piece. So now that end piece sticks right into here. And I happen to do, oh no, I did do the middle wire, okay. But before we do that, we need to cut off the scrap that I talked about before. So you just take a little pair of snips, close cutters, get right up under it like that, and then just snip it right off. Okay, and then we can insert this. Again, that little tab that sticks up, you'll see in the connector, it has a little molded piece for that to indicate where it's supposed to go. And then it goes right in there like that. And this is a little tedious and I have big fat fingers, so I prefer to use a pair of tweezers to push it in there. And there we go. And if it doesn't seem to have gone all the way in, then I get out my dental tool, which is a very, very handy tool for all kinds of stuff. And then I just give it a little push. Okay, so there we go, all connected. So the beauty of these connectors is yes, DuPont connectors are well and good for breadboarding and having fun with experimenting, but 
For our little electronics, low voltage stuff, guys, you can't beat these JST connectors. Look how beautiful that looks. And yes, I made this ribbon cable myself. <laughs> so once we're all done here, these are gonna look really good and no more loose connections. I mean, this is not gonna jitter, not gonna get any connection problems like the DuPont connectors cause. So there you go. That's my take on installing and creating JST cables. Hope you learned something. Thanks everyone.